All right, this is the final part of our final part three of the videos over the unit test review. Number 15, what is the first step in solving an equation? Square root of x minus 2 plus 7 equals 11. We've had this two-step process all year long for solving special equations. Solving special equations, square roots and squareds and absolute values and any anything with a with a funky function in it. Step one isolate the function. Whatever the special portion is, isolate it. And and it's gonna have the variable x within that function. Step two, undo the function, the inverse to get the variable in question out of the function. All right, so in this particular case, number 15, we have the square root of x minus 2 plus 7 equals 11. Isolate the function. Here the function is the square root. I've, I've shown just circle the, the function. Treat this like you're solving for red circle. If I were solving for red circle, the first thing I would do is subtract 7 on both sides. 7 subtract 7 to leave red circle, which is really the square root of x minus 2, 4. So that's the first step. First step, subtract 7 from both sides. Okay. Um, it doesn't ask for it here, but from here, step 2, undo the function. To undo this function, we would square on both sides. The square root has a little implied 2 index. This squaring cancels with this square root to leave the radicand expression x minus 2, uh, 4 squared is 16. Lastly, we add 2 on both sides. This would yield x is 18. Now we need to try this and see if it works. Sometimes we'll have what we call extraneous solutions. They don't work out. This is going to work, though. 18 minus 2 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4, and 4 plus 7 is 11. That's a true statement. x equal 18 is a solution. It is, in fact, the only solution. All right, number 16. We have square roots on both sides. When you have that, when we have square on both sides, you're just going to essentially get the square roots like they are. Number 16. When we have square roots on both sides, we're going to square both sides. We're going to square the left side. And we're going to square the right side. When you square the left side, the square cancels with the square root to leave our radicand 5x minus 2. When you square this side, you're squaring both. You're squaring the 2 and you're squaring this radical expression. Well, 2 squared will be 4. Said another way, it's 2 to the first square. That becomes 2 to the second, which is 4. Again, the square cancels with the square root to leave 2x minus 5. It's still multiplied by. This is really the power rule. The power rule says if, if you have a product like um, a to the first and b to the second, and you take that to the third, you got to take both of them individually. This becomes a to the first and b, pardon me, a to the third and b to the sixth. So we have a product. The product was 2 in that um, radical expression. The radical expression simply comes out. The 2 became 4, but it's still multiplied together. So now we need to distribute the 4. We have um, 8x minus 20. On this side, we have 5x minus 2. We have variables on both sides. Let's get rid of one of those variables. In this case, subtracting 5x on both sides. That yields negative 2 on the left. 3x minus 20 on the right. Solving for x, I'll add 20 on both sides. 3x on the right, negative 2 plus 20 will be 18. Dividing by 3, um, x is 6. We should take that 6 and substitute it back in to see if it works. Substituting 6, we would have the square root, 5 times 6 is 30, minus 2 on that side. Here, 2 times 6 is 12, minus 5, 
7. So we have two square roots of 7 over here. These two expressions are equal, even though they might not look like it. You could put, put them in the calculator to see, but I'm going to simplify this. Um, 30 minus 2 is 28. So this gives us the square root of 28. To simplify a radical expression, we break it up into a perfect square. 28 is 4 times 7. Now we can take the square root of 4. It's a 2. The in-between step is here, breaking up this into a product. The square root of a product is the product of the square roots. The square root of 4 is 2. And so here we see we have 2 square roots of 7 on the right and the left. All right, number um, 17. So we have radical 3x plus 1 is equal to x minus 3. Well, step 1, isolate the square root. It's done. Step 2, undo the square root. So squaring both sides. Squaring the right and squaring the left. The square cancels with the square root to leave 3x plus 1. Here we need to um, square this. To square it, it's to multiply it by itself. Distributing x times x is x squared. x times minus 3 will be a minus 3x. Another minus 3x and a plus 9. x squared. A couple of minus 3x's and a plus 9. Combining these two gives us negative 6x. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 9. Well, this is a quadratic. We have a lot of ways to solve quadratics, but many of them involve setting the equation equal to 0. So in this case, I'm going to subtract 3x and subtract 1. All right, so we get the 0 we desire on the left-hand side, x squared, unlike term. Negative 6, negative 3 is a minus 9x. 9 minus 1 is plus 8. Well, this one's factorable. Anytime we got a plus here and this number is 1 more than it, it's going to be factorable. Two parentheses. x times x is x squared. Plus here means two of those. Minus, minus. 8 is 8 and 1. x times x is x squared. Negative 8x and negative 1x is a minus 9x, and negative 8 times negative 1 is a plus 8. So we have two factors multiplied together give 0, 0 product property. I can set x minus 8 equals 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0. Hopefully here you know it's going to be x is 8. Here it's x is equal to 1. We could also solve by graphing. We could complete the square. We could quadratic formula. Lots of ways, but these might not work, particularly when you have, where you have a, a square root on one side and an algebraic expression on the other. You might have some extraneous solutions. Substituting 8. We want to substitute 8 and 1 separately. Substituting 8. Right-hand side, 8 minus 3 is 5. Left-hand side, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. 8 works. X equal 8. Good to go. Other one, 1. Not going to work. Um, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. But on this side, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. It's a situation where this square root symbol is the principal square root, positive square root, as opposed to t taking the, the plus and minus, the positive Technically, it's called the principal square root. Principal square root. We just look. We just consider the positive root. Principal square root. So, x equal one is extraneous. Yes, x equal one is extraneous. X equal eight is the only solution. Yes, that's true. There are no extraneous solutions. No, x equal one is extraneous. X and one are both solutions. No, eight is a solution, but one is extra. Not a solution, extraneous solution. Night 18, simplify the expression, assume that all variables are positive. In simplified form, all exponents must be positive. Rationalize any irrational denominators. Reminding what this phrase means, if we end up with something that has a square root in the bottom, this is an irrational number, typically we will do what's called rationalizing the denominator. We multiply it by 
this special version of one, a square root times itself simply comes out. Five times square root of seven, we would write it in this fact. That's rationalizing the denominator. Rationalize denominator. This number here is one. Five or something times one is itself. This object and this object are equivalent because we have just multiplied by that thing. Something divided by itself is one. Okay. All right. Number 18, again, power to a power we multiply. Thus, um, four over three times two becomes eight over three in the top. In the bottom, this does x no power, it's an implied one. So two times one is x squared. Y to the one third squared becomes y to the two thirds. Uh, Mr. Richmond, shouldn't we have simplified this in the parentheses first? We could have, and we would end up with the same thing we're gonna end up here. Okay. Now we, we have this y over y. This right here we can employ the quotient rule when divide the same we subtract the exponent. 8 over 3 minus 2 over 3 is 6 over 3. And 6 over 3 reduces to 2. So this becomes y squared over x squared. Number 9. If you have two radical expressions multiplied together, you can just multiply the radicands together. That's if the index is the same. In this case, it's the square root. It's all an implied two. So we can simply multiply those underneath the same. If you don't have the index the same, you cannot do that. In this case, we have different indexes, so we can change to a rational expression. That is the square root of 10, we can call 10 to the 1 half. The cube root of 10, we can call 10 to the 1 third. And the 6 root of 10, we can call 10 to the 1 sixth. Now we can employ our rule. It says the base is the same. We can keep that base the same and add together those exponents. 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 sixth. Well, I can do some common denominator in here. 1 half is the same as 3 over 6. 1 third is the same as 2 over 6. 1 6 is still 1 over 6. Now you can see we all over 6. 3 plus 2 is 5 and 1 more is 6. This is 10 to the 6 over 6. Anything over itself is 1. This is 10 to the 1st and that is. That concludes this video.